Linda Duncan? Okay, she's not here.
Y'all sit down. If, you, if you're going to sit down, just about a verse or two, then you got to get up again. Give you a rest. sing this so I can hear you. I love this song. I love to hear them altos when they bell. Living in Canaan. 287.
feeling Jesus around here? Amen. No, really, is anybody feeling Jesus around here? Amen. Praise God. I tell you what, he's good. She's going to sing a song. Y'all, I, I, I was really blessed. Sophie, over at the hospital the other day, she sang a song, and, it, and uh, she sang it to everybody that was in the waiting room. Yeah, and I asked her, I said, where did you, you learn that song at? You learned it at Children's Church? She said, oh, no, sir, I, I learned at Miss Amanda's class. <laughs> yeah. And so before we receive the choir, let's see if she'll sing that, Miss Monica. This was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree for what he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed away, he looked up in the tree. He said, Zacchaeus, you come down. I'm going to your house today. I'm going to your house today. Hey, man. I don't know why she's acting shy. There's not a bit of shyness in her. But anyway, <laughs> acting like her Grammy, I understand. <laughs> hey, uh, I think, do we have the video ready? Was you showing it over here or over there? No, no, no. We're just showing it over here. Okay, we're going to show a video of some Winterfest. Now, uh, don't, don't leave too early tonight. Uh, sometimes we leave too early uh, because after church tonight, uh, we, we got somebody getting married for the second time. Yeah, to each other. <laughs> but, but Steve and Stacy are going to renew their wedding vows, and, and then after that, I want all the, uh, everyone that would, whether you're going to stay for potluck or not, but everyone that would, we want you to go over to the gym, to the activity center, and sit on the bleachers. Uh, the, our, our students are going to do the drama 
that they done at Winterfest and they also won first place in the state of Arkansas by doing this drama. <laughs> Somebody asked why don't they do it in here because poor little old Savannah, they throw her up so high she'd hit her head on this ceiling. Now, I don't have a clue what that has to do with, with God, Savannah, but I, well, yeah, I do. We're all praying, Lord, don't let her hit the floor. Don't let her hit the floor. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but Nathan or Don ex will explain the drama to us when we get over there. So, and, and then, you know, we'll have our potluck and our wedding shower. So everybody stick around as long as you can. But this is about Winterfest, isn't it? Some short clips of Winterfest. And, and, and let me say this, one of the students told me, that they told him it would be about three or 400 kids out there. Don't worry about the crowd and everything. When they went out there, there was, I think, over 3,000. No, uh, oh, no, let's, we're evangelistically speaking here, Nathan. <laughs> yeah, over 6,000 people out there. Okay. <laughs> hey, praise God. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I go this side, it may go to 10,000, Jerry. <laughs> All right, let's watch this, this uh, uh, clip, this video real quick. discouraged because I wouldn't like anyone else and I wouldn't do the things that other people did but then there was a word given to me that there was nothing normal about me and that I'm not normal and there is a drink deep inside of me and no one knows what it is it's time to sing your song again whatever may well when it was 2014 it was a great year for me uh, God shows me that if you trust in Him and you let Him do what He's doing, that He'll make a way because when I seen that stage, I told myself and I told everybody around me, I wouldn't throw in Savannah, I'm going to try. That's out of the picture. And 
at the end of the day, I threw Savannah, and, well, it was kind of like God was telling me Friday night that when the preacher asked for the men who have been called into ministry to go up there, and I feel that he has called me up there, but I told myself he don't want me being here. I mean, instead of stuff I've done and the things I do now, I, he don't want me. And so I've told myself that many times. And I feel that I have been called, but I've been putting it off as much as I can. But I feel I have been called into ministry. And Saturday night was a great night. I had a, a it's like the preacher was talking directly to me about everything he was saying. And, Winterfest 2014 was just a great year. Oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his soul. Um, I'm Colby. Um, what I, what at Winterfest, what it did for me was open my eyes to a lot of things. Uh, God is, when I first got there, I just wasn't into the services. By the end of the, by the end of Winterfest, it, I really opened my eyes, and ever since, I've prayed every day, and I just can't explain how I felt. It was, it's truly amazing, and it, it, I, it was probably one of the best experiences of my life. And on that day, when my strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forever We went into a, a where, where'd we eat lunch after anybody know? Uh, Chinese, that's right, ate Chinese today. And, and we're standing in line, this lady said, uh, Are, aren't you the pastor of Beverly Ridge Church of God? And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I hear y'all got a lot going on with your youth department out there. Yeah, I, that's a blessing. Never met this lady in my life. But somebody in the church was talking about our church, and she seen a picture of me on Facebook, Rick, and and, and I believe that's how she recognized me. <laughs> Words getting out what God is doing in our youth program. Amen. And I just real quickly want you to give Brother Nathan and Sister Dawn a hand for what they've done for our youth group. Hey, man, I, I appreciate uh, what they're doing. I appreciate your giving and your support. Uh, Nathan and Dawn is working wonderfully with our youth boards, our junior and senior youth board, and, and uh, I appreciate them so much for what they're doing. I appreciate you being here tonight. We've just come to worship the Lord. Already feel God here, don't we, church? Uh, how many really feels the Lord here? Yeah. All right, I'm going to let you prove it. Ushers, would you come? <laughs> we we're going to find out, Sister God, how much everybody's feeling God now. <laughs> I had one man said, I'm so excited about God, I'd give $1,000, but only got $10 on me. So anyway, <laughs> I, I told him, Gary, I wasn't going to tell them about you, about you on that, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> but Gary, if you would, sir, pray on this offering.
Amen. We do appreciate your giving, and Mike is fixing to come back up now for special singing. But before he comes up, I, I just want to say appreciate Brother Corley preaching here in a few minutes. And uh, the last Sunday night of the, the month, I always like one of our ministers to preach, whether it be Tim, Gary, or Brother Nathan, and, and uh, it gives me a night off that month. But uh, Brother Tim was coming in. He was here that last Sunday night, but he was coming in from Winterfest, and so we po postponed it to the last Sunday night. And, and we kind of got iced up last Sunday night, didn't we? And so uh, he'll be, he's going to minister to us tonight. Uh, and also, the, the last Sunday uh, night of this month, Velvet Ridge Singers are going to be singing. Hey, man, you excited about that? <laughs> Velvet Ridge Singers are going to be singing. Uh, uh, Brother Nathan and I will, will be uh, escorting all our ladies, or I don't know if we'll call it escorting them or chaperoning them. But, uh, or driving them or what. Hey, I'm going to get in trouble. But we, we're going to be with the ladies that, that last Sunday of the month, that morning. And uh, so Brother Gary Cox will be preaching and, and taking care of the pulpit that Sunday morning and Velvet Ridge that night. And uh, then the following Sunday, and I, I normally don't do this, but uh, Brother Chelch Reagan, and most of you know Chelch Reagan, he's, he's not just my mentor, he's my spiritual father. And uh, Chelch... Him and Dixon, they launched Kelly and I out in the ministry. Well, that's his last Sunday morning, uh, and he's retiring after 31 years. And so uh, uh, we've been asked to come over. Uh, Brother Higgins, our state bishop, is going to be preaching that morning. And, and we just wanted to be a part of that celebration uh, with, with Brother Reagan and Sister Dixie Reagan. And, and Nathan will be preaching that morning, and then we'll be back that night ministering. And then we'll have a baptizing, Stacy. Uh, the, the, she said, I gotta wait another month. But uh, so we will have a baptizing the first Sunday night of uh, next month. So keep all this. Uh, I just want to let you know why we wouldn't be here those two Sunday mornings. Michael, come on up, buddy. Uh, hey, appreciate Mike, what he's doing for the Lord. Amen, church. Amen. You got a prayer list and agitate list up here. I'll tell you, how many we have this morning? Evangelist, you can speak. 109. They wasn't all visitors either. It's maybe three or four. Get your natural tea list. To all the ones that wasn't here, we'll blow this place out. We got chairs we can put around. Let me go up here. Mike, some of them didn't see my video I put out last night. So set your clocks up and be on time. What? I, I, I put a video out on, on Facebook. Yeah. Set your clocks up and be on time. I don't think everybody saw it. Everybody didn't see it, so you need to see that video. <laughs> oh, okay. But there's next week. In case some, some of them won't even set it up this week. <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway, again, on the prayer list, but that's very important. And uh, invite somebody next week. Let's just see how many we can get in here. You know, I know some of you got friends, some of you do, some of you don't, but the ones that does. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I've got one, but they already go to church here, huh, Boa? Addresses for Easter, please. Let's get them turned in. We got a, we got a little time to do it, but the, the more time we have, the more you can get in, and, and uh, we'll have a big time. And Brother Doug is going to be preaching that Sunday. We're not going to. Uh, I think. Okay. He and I talked about it, and, and uh, we're not going to have a big singing and all that stuff. We'll we'll do things pertaining to Easter, but I'm looking forward to hearing Brother Doug preach. Potluck dinner after church and all that. So uh, we got a lot to look forward to. We don't. It's not just next week, but it's a couple of three months down the road. Amen. All right. Let's see who's Ricky, huh? Brother Eddie, come on up here and sing for us, would you, Brother Eddie? And then uh, uh, Brother Ricky's going to sing, and then Sister Angela's going to sing. It looks to me like she's got a group with her. So y'all worship the Lord with them. Amen. Y'all pray for me. I have a 
Might got a little head cold from dumping some water on my head. I'm not sure about that. No. <laughs> Praise God. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I had four of my grandkids at the house, and after I done it, they all wanted to get a cup and pour water on their hand. We're like, no, 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 no. You know, but <laughs> praise God. Y'all pray for me and just let the Lord bless you. John, don't you cry, it is all a part of the plan. For there in the center of God's glorious throne, hallelujah, there stood a lamb. Casting down crowns and praising his name. When they cried, Who is worthy? I can hear Jesus saying, I am. Praise God forever. There stood a lamb. Now open your Bible. Open your heart. It is clear we are in the last day. And he said, I'll come quickly, so don't be surprised when he comes back to take us away. And feeble excuses won't get very far when you find yourself there at his throne. And if you know Jesus, and he is your Lord, hallelujah, you won't be alone. And we'll sing worthy, worthy of honor and praise. He is worthy. We'll be casting down crowns. I can hear Jesus saying, I am. Saying, I am. Oh, praise God forever. There stood a lamb. And we'll sing, worthy, worthy. Yes. 
kingdom crown and praising his name when he says are you worthy I can hear Jesus saying I am oh praise God forever wonderful song brother Eddie and I feel your pain on that water Duncan some of us it took three times to get a video that we could send <laughs> three times <laughs> <coughs> I wanted to I want to say that uh, uh, I'm gonna sing Beulah Land um, and uh, this week uh, I talked to uh, I talked to a uh, fellow last night and then there was a family that, um, one of the singing groups that uh, we sing with a lot, they had a loss. And the uh, point being is that heaven gets sweeter every day. kind of homesick for a country to which I never been before no sad goodbye
a heart that's broken make it over again but I a little thing that he saw on the on the uh, marquee this week and uh, said that you know you read need to read the Bible because there's going to be a test and I come up here on the stage and I said well I I know what the answer is I already got the answer to the to the questions on the test does anybody else got a question know the answers to the Questions on the test that God's going to ask us? There's one answer. Jesus. That's the only answer that we need whenever we get to heaven. When we stand before the Father and He looks at us and says, Why should I let you into my kingdom? The only answer is, Jesus, save my soul. Jesus has set me free. By the power of God, I am redeemed. And by His blood, I am able to enter into the kingdom. Tonight, I want to talk about, though, when the trumpet sounds. Uh, just for some stupid reason, I come up here and I pulled my little bookmarker out of my Bible. Numbers chapter 10. There's a story in the Bible about a group of people named the Israelites 
And they were in bondage for 400 years in the land of Egypt. And while they were in this bondage, they were beaten and they were abused. And they were brought to a place to where that every time that there was something going on or something was going wrong, they were, they were blamed for it. Their task that they had to perform was to make bricks. And, and I don't believe the bricks were just a, a little uh, three by five or, or six by eight. or how, how, how big is a brick, Brother Don? Well, just one on my house. How big is that brick? I don't have brick on my house is what he said. <laughs> I got rock. <laughs> How big is it? Okay, yay big by yay long. I'm not talking about one of them bricks. I'm talking about a I'm talking about a four by four, four foot by four foot by four foot. We're talking about huge bricks that they were making. And they had to do this simply by gathering the mortar, gathering the mud, and they would put straw in that mud in order for it to be a brick. And what were they building? What? The pyramids. Or they were building the, the, also the buildings where that the pharaohs would, would die. There would be the temples. They were building all of the beautiful buildings that we see in Egypt. And through all of that time that they were having to build these things and they were being put down and they were being put to the place to where that it seemed like that there was a taskmaster on them every time that they were, they were turned around. There was somebody always with a whip. There was somebody always with a command. There was always somebody making them do something that they really didn't want to do. And as a result, they were a beat down people. They had no hope. They had no peace. They needed deliverance. And so God sent a man named Moses. And Moses came along in the name of the Lord. And Moses came and he helped them to, by the power of God, he was a prophet that God used, and they were delivered from the land of Egypt. And from there they went out into the wilderness, and there they were, they were trying to find their way, and God instructed them that they should build a tabernacle. And the tabernacle was the place for the residence of God in the midst of the people. Now I know I'm going a little slow, but I wanted to put some background here tonight before I keep going. I want you to understand that this was a tabernacle. A tabernacle, uh, young people, means a transportable or a movable place of worship. This is not a tabernacle. A tabernacle would be like a tent. And this was set up like a tent and, and God had it made a certain way and God gave them instructions on how they should do things. I really liked what God said to them in Leviticus over and over and over. He said, if you'll just do what I tell you to, I'm paraphrasing. If you'll just do what I tell you to, everything's going to be all right. How many times have we been in that place in our lives where we felt like if we just had some instruction on where we were supposed to go and how much we needed some instruction on what we were supposed to do? Anybody ever feel that way? Somebody gave you a task or they expected something from you and they didn't tell you how to do it? Yeah. I've started jobs before to where they said, well, this is the way that we do this and walk away. Or better yet, adults, have you ever asked your children how that you were supposed to do something on the computer and they walked over and they go, well, you just do this and then walk away? Not, not Brother Doug, but the rest of us. He's pretty tech savvy. I, I, I don't know how many times I've asked Josh or Jared how to, to do something on a computer. They go, oh, you just do this, Daddy. And I'm going, what did you do? But we need instruction as we go along. And God gave them this instruction. If you want to read with me, though, in all that we read, we very seldom read, though, that God gave them instruction for making the trumpet. Now when we think about a trumpet, what do we think about? Okay, this is, this is, we're going to interact tonight, okay. <laughs> Jazz. <laughs> Not Wynton Marcellus, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of a different player. He's a little bit larger. Some people think he's got wings, I don't think so, but some people think he's got wings. 
Who? Larry Bird. <laughs> Who plays a trumpet? Gabriel. Oftentimes we believe that Gabriel's going to be playing a trumpet. And we feel like that at the trump of God, it tells us in the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, where it says at the sound of the trumpet of God that actually, I'm going to have to back up a little bit. I would not have you therefore ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are fallen asleep, but at the, tr at the sound of the Lord, at the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, those that are uh, that the dead in Christ shall rise, and those that are alive and remain shall be called up with Him, for we shall all be together with Him forever in the air. Okay? We think about the trumpet, we think about the angel, or we think about God. This is the trumpet of the Lord. But there is something more significant about the rapture. There is more significance about the trumpets of the Lord blowing than just us getting up and going. There's a whole lot more to it. Oftentimes that's what we see. You know, we used to do this thing back in the 70s and 80s where we're jumping around in church and we say, rapture practice. Anybody else ever? Y'all didn't do that? They were doing it the other day. I saw them, you know. Y'all didn't know that was rapture practice, though, did you? Just jumping up and down for the Lord. That's what you do. Rapture practice. Getting ready to go. But the trumpet will call. And oftentimes in our hearts, we believe and we, we've got in our minds that that's all there is to it. That the trumpet is going to blow and we're going to go. There's more to it than just the trumpet blowing and us going. Read, read with me in Numbers chapter 10 through 10, 1 through 10. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Make two silver trumpets for, for yourself. You shall make them of hammered work. You shall use them by call, for calling the congregation and for directing the movement of the camps. When they both blow of them, all of the congregation shall gather before you at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. But if they blow only one, then the leaders, the heads of the divisions of Israel shall gather to you. When you sound the advance, the camps that lie on the east side shall then begin their journey. When you sound the advance the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall begin their journey. They shall, they shall sound the call for them to begin their journeys. And when the assembly is to be gathered together, you shall blow, but not sound the advance. The sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow the trumpets, and these shall be to you as an ordinance forever throughout your generation. When you go to war in your land against the enemy who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpet, and you shall remember before the Lord your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. Also in the day of your gladness in your appointed feast, at the beginning of your months, you shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, and they shall be a memorial for you before your God. I am the Lord your God. The blowing of the trumpet. The blowing of the trumpet has significance. First of all, whenever we hear the trumpet blow, we will realize that we have finished our journey. They're talking about here that there's a journey that has to be made. In every one of us in our Christian walk, we are making a journey. We're going from point A to point B. Hopefully, we're going from where we were a sinner and we were delivered by the hand of God to that place that God has called us to go that we're ready to go to heaven, that we're going to get to heaven. He called it and said that whenever you blow this trumpet, that it will be a sound that will cause the people to stir. And when that stirring begins to take place, that they will get ready for themselves to go to that place that is ahead. The first call is for the journey. There is a call that is going out today that we do not often hear with our ears, but it is by the power of God. The word tells us over in the book of Jeremiah, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm in the holy city. What it's saying there is that today each and every one of us have the ability to blow the trumpet for God because blowing the trumpet for God means that we are declaring that the coming of the Lord is soon, that we have a purpose 
purpose in the kingdom of God and that is to let those that are around us know that Jesus is coming that the journey is soon to end and that the journey needs to be made known for each and every one the second thing that they had to do was that they got the, the blowing of the trumpet was that they would all gather together Whenever the Lord's trumpet comes together, if the Bible tells us and we get the, the, the indication that every, every tribe, every nation, every person that is ready to meet the Lord shall be caught up in the air. Have you ever thought about that? You ever given that any imagination? Let your imagination go wild about the trumpet of God sounding and us being caught up to, in the air to be with the Lord? And not... You know, sometimes my, my imagination's a little limited. But as I was thinking about this today, I, I got to thinking, everybody from Velvet Ridge, Ball Knob, White County, Arkansas, the United States of America, the Northern Hemisphere, the Southern Hemisphere, the world is going to be caught up at the sounding of that trumpet. Not just you and I. Not just those that are in this room that are ready to meet God. But everybody in the world that is ready to meet God at the sounding of that trumpet is going to be caught away and is going to be caught up to be with Him. To always be with the Lord. The sounding of the trumpet that we read about in Thessalonians is to let the, the congregation know that it's time to come together. What happens when the congregation comes together? Sir, we've come to praise the Lord. What did we come here tonight to do? Praise the Lord. We come to worship. We come to praise Him. We come to glorify Him. Whenever we stop and realize that the trumpet of the Lord that is going to sound at that great and marvelous day is one where all of the congregation comes together. Red and yellow, black and white. It doesn't matter what their colors are. It doesn't matter what their, their nationalities are. It doesn't matter the race. It doesn't matter the tongue. It doesn't matter anything about them. They're going to all be cut up, caught up to worship the Lord. It's going to be a gathering. Oh, how is it whenever you have your family reunion with the Suggs? Y'all all, yeah, she just smiled thinking about all them Suggs showing up. We just smile when we think about all them Coxes coming down in the holler. We just smile when we think about the family, our family getting together at Christmas time and, and everybody comes together and we have a wonderful time with one another. Oh, what a day, glorious day. That will be when all of God's children gather together and we're all assembled in one place and we're all in one mind and one accord. I don't believe it's going to be a quiet time. I don't. Somebody said there's going to be 30 minutes of silence in heaven. Well, that's just fine. But after that, it's going to get crazy, folks. God, we're going to give the Lord praise, glory, and honor. We're going to worship Him. And somewhere, somewhere, uh, somehow along that line, we're going to just give Him the glory, the honor, and the thanks for all of the things that He has done for us. Now, we need to understand that also the third thing, whenever the trumpets were brought together, it was, a tri it was a, to be a sound of war. The sound of war. We need to understand that whenever the last trumpet is sounded, it will be a sound that the war is over. In the Old Testament, it was a sound where the war began. But in the coming of the Lord, it will be a sound that the war is over. We will stand together and we will say, was this the one that tormented us when we look at Satan. This will be the one that, that we came and, and we saw that he tormented us and he tore us down. 
But whenever the battle is over, the battle is over at the sounding, at the last trump of God. No longer do we have to worry about our trials. No longer will we worry about our temptations. But we're going to be caught away to be with the Lord. And that's what it's all about. That's what we're getting ready for is the coming of the Lord. But in the end of this, I want us to understand that God has saying that every time, lastly, whenever the trumpet is to sound, that is the time that we have brought our offering and our sacrifices before God. Has the trumpet of the Lord sounded in your heart? And have you brought to Him the offering and the sacrifice? Say, said, Brother Tim, we don't do that anymore. Well, yeah, we do. The offering and the sacrifices is no longer bulls and rams, but it's by the blood of Jesus Christ. But there is an offering that we need and we must offer unto God. And that is us. 100% sold out. So oftentimes we say, well, I'm, I, I'm a Christian and things are just going wrong in my life. What's going on? I want you to know that what's going on in your life is not about you. It's about God. Whenever you're sold out to Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. It's all about what God is going to do. I really enjoyed hearing the story about uh, a, a man. Uh, well, actually, it was a story about a man that, that he always was real negative in his life. And he was telling people no about everything. And he was coming to church and he was doing everything that he was supposed to do for God. Or, or what he thought he was supposed to do for God. And one Sunday he realized that he wasn't really sold out to God 100%. He wasn't giving God everything that he was supposed to give. So oftentimes we think that all we're supposed to do is give our, our money. We're supposed to give of our time. We're supposed to give of our talent. We're supposed to give of our treasure. Oh, it's so much more than that. It's giving our hearts our desires, our dreams. That we give everything that goes on in our lives, our good times, our bad times, everything belongs to God. Everything. Dad tells a story about a, a, an Indian. And the Indian came and he took off his headdress and he laid it on the altar and he said, I give you my headdress because that was the most valuable thing to him because that gave him his position. He was the chief, so he gave the position of being chief to God. And he didn't feel like the Lord had accepted that, so he went out and he got his horse and he brought his horse in and he brought it beside the altar and he said, I give you my horse, which was his place of status. And his most important possession was that horse. And he didn't feel any change, so he went and he got his wife and his children, and he brought them in, and he put them on the altar, and he said, I give you all of my children, and, and I bring you all of my possessions. I give you everything. And he still didn't feel a change in his life. And finally, the old Indian just laid down on the altar and said, I give you the Indian, and that's all that God ever wanted in the first place. When we read about God consuming the sacrifice, that God consumed it, it means He ate it up. He took the whole thing. He devoured it. And in our lives, we need to let God devour us and recognize that we are giving ourselves 100% in obedience unto God. Because the Scripture actually tells us in 2 Samuel that God would rather us have obedience even than sacrifice. The trumpet, that last trumpet that sounds is about our sacrifices. That trumpet of the Lord that will sound will not be about a sacrifice that we give that will someday that we said, well, 
I, I'm going to I'm going to give up food, or I'm going to give up uh, sleep, or I'm going to do something in prayer and fasting for God. Because sometimes the sacrifice that we say that we give in our life is a way of manipulating God into giving us something back. But we have to understand that our salvation is not gained by grace; it's gained by the favor of God, and it's not because we did anything to get it, and we can't do anything to keep it except to be obedient unto the Lord and what he has called and asked you to do so our sacrifices will all be consumed at the last trump of God every bit of your obedience will be swept up have you ever gone anywhere and not been prepared to get there You ever gone camping and forgot your sleeping bag or your tent? Y'all, yeah, y'all done that. You ever gone anywhere, Uncle Dwight, and forgot the music? <laughs> See? I don't want to be that way whenever the trump of the Lord can't sound. I don't want to be unprepared. And if I will come and be a part of the congregation, I will come and I will fight with my brothers and sisters against the enemy. And I will come and I will lay my life down before the Father that whenever that final trumpet sounds, I'll be ready. Anybody else want to be ready? Anybody? You want to be ready? Well, stand to your feet. If you want to be ready tonight, I would invite you to stand to your feet. Bow your head. Say this prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I want to be ready. Forgive me of my sin. I turn my life into your hands. Not that my will will be done, but that your will will be done forever and ever. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. All right. Did you enjoy that message tonight? All right. You can be seated for just a moment. And uh, we, we got a, a wedding, and, and I'm trying to get set up here before we do this, because uh, uh, let's see. We want to set the mood for this wedding. So, uh, uh, hey, Rick, why are you up there? Cut the lights out in the back. Start at the very, start.